Greetings. Today's talk focuses on the 0 to 60 time form factor of the Tesla Semi and Mule. It's not so obvious, but a driver could save between one and two hours a day in time by using an electric truck. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. If this is your first time watching our videos. Please take time to like and, and or subscribe. We cover a lot of quality Tesla information you don't want to miss out on. Bonjour, wie geht's in Straßwitsche? Ni hao ma. This is Greg, and today's talk focuses on another aspect of the mule that we had an encounter with relative to performance. In particular, what I was focused on today is a discussion had by Elon Musk about attributes that he had reviewed with the Tesla Semi. The first thing that he talked about was the fact that it could out-torque uh, the current trucks. He also reviewed the fact that, you know, the Semi would pull a regular Semi up a hill and easily in terms of the amount of power that it would exert. He then, you know, went on to indicate that everything else would be delayed until the initial introduction at this point is scheduled for mid-November. What I thought was interesting about this situation is that um, as I had a chance to watch the mule in action from Tesla, there are a lot of elements of it that I was impressed by. Um, sound was awesome, i.e. little to none other than the air brake. The, Another aspect of it that I was really stunned by was watching the vehicle pull away from the curb and the fact that at the points where I was expecting first, second, third gear in order to move forward, the vehicle simply went ahead and moved with no issues whatsoever, i.e. no change of gear issues normally associated with a vehicle at the 80,000, you know, uh, capacity size. So the next thought I had was about this was to sort of look at different aspects. We've covered the battery uh, pack size and cost. Um, we've covered smoke uh, or lack thereof and no noise. But there's an interesting aspect that pops up which is the 0 to 60 time. And why this is a big deal is that since I've been doing videos focused on trucking I've been carefully observing what was going on with the movement of trucks typically and how electric might impact the movement of those trucks. And the 0 to 60 time came up. Elon Musk talked about the fact that it handles like a sports car. And what was sort of buzzing in my mind is, you know, kind of why does this matter that it runs like a sports car? Matter of fact, it could not run like a sports car because that's not necessary. Now, I want you to think about this, and the fact is, if you see a diesel semi moving around you, you'll notice that there are things called stoplights. And one of the challenges for each of those stoplights, particularly if you're behind other traffic, is that that vehicle may in fact need a couple of stoplights to get through because gearing up to move that much weight, let's say 80,000 pounds, through a light, especially if there's traffic, can take a while. So typically you'll notice that most of the big diesel semis will locate at large warehouses outside the city and then have smaller uh, distribution trucks. So I believe that once the electric semis start coming in, because of how efficiently these trucks can move through stoplights, it might, it, it will, I think, impact where these trucks end up moving goods throughout major cities. One, because of no noise, and two, especially because of the fact that they don't have to go through the gears in order to get that vehicle moving. Now, if you do a random, I would say that there's at least one missed light, maybe two or three, that's associated with driving a, a semi through a stoplight. So, why is this big? Well, let's say you do five minutes of light. It might be three minutes. 
and let's say this hits you at every light. Now, five minutes times ten the light is what? Fifty minutes, exactly. So if you have very few lights that this vehicle is going through, no big deal, right? But if you end up with lights prior to the vehicle getting, or even stop signs prior to the vehicle getting to its destination, all of this delay time that's not arriving at the destination and leaving is time you have to pay the driver for, but time that the vehicle sits there. Now, what if the vehicle had a 0 to 60 time in the 10 second range that this vehicle, 10 ish range, be it, you know, 9 seconds up to 14 second range, versus currently, there's a lot of different configuration of trucks, but somewhere around 25 to 30 seconds is a 0 to 60 time on a fully loaded uh, 80,000 pound semi. So, hence, what this also means is think about those on-ramps that those trucks are entering. To get to 60 miles an hour typically takes somewhere in the two to three mile range. And so again, it's you're thinking about what the average speed of truck is 50 or 55 miles, which is great, but what if it takes multiple minutes for that truck to wind up to that speed? So as a result, guess what's happening? Elon Musk talked about the fact that the torque curve is flat for an electric vehicle, there are no gears. Well, what this means is that, yeah, you might want to save battery by going slow as you move up to your speed, but there's going to be a trade-off between speed of getting up to highway speed and performance of the battery that causes many owners to move to electric and then use the torque curve of that electric vehicle to actually cut down on the amount of time it takes for the vehicle to be at highway speeds. So if I were to ballpark guess it, I think that the average electric truck will reduce the transit time by as much as an hour. And the reason is if you add a few lights into the time it doesn't take you to get up to highway speed, that combination is in the ballpark of an hour. And let's say we add in something like mountains, for example, where this torque curve really comes into play, again, there might be some issues relative to the heat generated on the batteries and then the range loss associated with that. However, if we control for that, for example, and it's well managed, if the truck is in the mountains for half the time that a truck usually takes to traverse those tall areas, this reference backs to one of my earlier videos where I suggested that having an electric truck hike the mountains as a focal spot to start with might be a way for FedEx or UPS, etc., to optimize best use of the torque capabilities of these trucks. So there are arguments against this. For example, one of my viewers uh, at Black Trucking in Washington was arguing that, look, the mountains above the area he lives in, it can be anywhere from freezing to 120 degrees. And when he sees Tesla's current vehicles go into those mountains at 100 degrees, the batteries tend to run hot, which means the vehicles have to go slowly in order to uh, not overheat in those mountains. So obviously the performance difference on a 2170 battery is going to be different than an 18650 battery currently in the X and S. But, you know, I'm not, I can't argue with that. I'm just highlighting some of the ways in which one can use the flat torque capabilities that you get when you switch over to electric in the semi-truck configuration. So for giggles and through that mountainous situation, I, you know, on flatland with some stoplights saved and the on uh, onto freeway speeds, etc., I'm confident that there's a half hour to an hour add to the drive time for that person that does deliveries. So however the companies want to use that is fine. They can use it in the form of uh, having the driver drive further, um, more brakes for the driver, however, but in, in most businesses there's a time value of money piece to it. And if you can cut an hour, maybe two hours a day out of the drive time of, of your uh, drivers or add that on to their trip, you know, that's just more money being made per mile. 
Um, I thought this was an interesting sort of further look at the mule because when you look at it take off, it's awesome to see something that big move that fast. So I'm again going to include as a link beneath as well as above access to the video to watch this vehicle take off. Uh, when it moves, it's not moving at, at sports car speed with 80,000 pounds. It's definitely moving at 10 second for the 60 mile an hour type of speed. And that can be really important in terms of reducing costs as you move through stoplights, as you do on and off ramps, as you get into areas that require an ability to move quickly as part of reducing the overall cost of operations. Look forward to your comments on this. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks for taking time out to view. Um, Tschüss, macht's gut. Au revoir, le hit road. Choda hafez. And uh, please like and comment if you would.